It's how do we miss that? All right. Um, now, sadly, I like this guy, Joshua Hill, and I align with Joshua Hill on a lot of things. And here I'm going to pull, I'm going to show you the article that everybody has republished on Substack because not Jonathan Katz's article, though he did help write this. This was a collective of writers on Substack that read Jonathan Katz's article and determined and decided that this was a problem that they couldn't live with and they were going to look, they want answers and they want, and they're demanding that the owners and that the leaders of this platform and company actually respond to them. So Joshua yeah. says, I talk a lot about collective action and I've been moved and encouraged to see well over 150 writers to clearly say that Substack should not assist Nazis in making money on this platform. The platform should not tolerate and help those whose message is the extermination of others. This to me is simple and not controversial, but the leadership of this company apparently needs to hear it and hear it louder and louder. So I'm grateful to those who put this together and glad I could add my voice to this growing chorus without further ado. And I can't stress how disappointed I am to see him sign off on this letter. He's one of the few, but I'll mm -hmm. tell you there are two or three DSA aligned people that have signed off on this. And this kind of tracks with along with DSA level kind of thinking and thought control. All right. Now what they are, yep. and you're going to read what, what they're going to ask here. So here is their big inflammatory image. Very clear. Dear Chris Hamish and Zhiraj, we're asking a very simple question. It's somehow been made complicated. Why are you platforming and monetizing Nazis? Okay. So here we go. Now they, they reference Jonathan's piece in the Atlantic, right? He says that some quote, some sub I love, how none, of these, I love how none of these people are asking Joe Biden why they're platforming and monetizing Nazis. Like to the tune like, you know of $150 I mean? billion dollars in the last two years. Yeah. Billion how about that? dollars. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, how about right? that? So, according to a piece written by okay. Substack publisher Jonathan M. Katz and published by The Atlantic on November 28th, which we talked about, the article, and I'm not, I, I don't want to quote it, but here's what they said, quote, some Substack newsletters by Nazis and white nationalists have thousands or tens of thousands of subscribers, not all of them paying, by the way, making the platform a new and valuable tool for creating mailing lists for the far right or for anybody else that wants to use a platform, he doesn't say, and many accept paid subscriptions through Substack, seemingly flouting terms of service that ban attempts to, quote, publish content or fund initiatives that incite violence based on protected classes. Substack, which takes a 10% cut of subscription revenue, makes money when readers pay for Nazi newsletters. I love how he just makes this kind of shit lip smear over and over <laughs> again. Yeah. All right? And paints... Now, yeah. Substack is just, they're, they're Nazis because they accept money. Right. Uh, they get a fee, just like they get the same 10% for every newsletter on the platform. If you set one up, they can't moderate your mm -hmm. content per se, unless it is sexual or literally breaking the law. Now, as Patrick Casey, a leader of the now defunct neo Nazi group who's banned on nearly every social platform except Substack, wrote here in 2021, okay, he goes, he's going back two years. Quote, I'm able to live comfortably doing something I find enjoyable and fulfilling. The cause isn't going anywhere. Several Nazis and white supremacists, including Richard Spencer, not only have paid subscriptions turned on, but have received Substack bestseller badges, indicating that they're making it minimum thousands of dollars a year. I'm going to repeat mm -hmm. that. They're making it minimum thousands of dollars a year, of which Substack gets 10%. Of which Substack gets 10%. Right. It's not about the money which for would Substack. Be 10, which would be a hundred bucks. It's not bucks about, a year. Or no, I, I, a I mean, thousand, it, it could be a couple be of 10. thousand or 10,000, even $10,000 a year, 20, hundred thousand right. a year. I mean, yeah. It, no, I know. At, if you look at, just, I'm just saying it's nothing. Right. If you're looking at the operating budget, it, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. literally a rounding error uh, in their accounting line. All right, this is not about money here. Yeah. It's about giving people the freedom to write whatever they want to know that unless that they're literally calling for people to be right. But also, do these same people go to every bank, every uh like 
do we want to talk about how many times that I don't know mainstream media has platformed open openly white supremacist like Nazi groups? Uh, you know, John Stewart literally shook his hand on a Disney stage. Yep, like he sure did. No, this I, I, I again completely blind to Ukraine. All right, but he says from right. our perspective, I'm not just talking about Ukraine. I'm talking about in Europe. None of these people are calling other businesses to like find Nazis and well, like, they're not. Get their they're money not actively, taken away there. They're not actively monetizing them in a way that's visible to to these people. Sure, and competing with their. I mean, there's a, there's countless cops that are openly KKK members, but mm-hmm. you know these same people aren't calling them out. Yeah, but so. So, from our perspective, they're, they're trying to go police people's words on fucking Substack. Now, now, Jonathan. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I've actually sorry. So, from our perspective as Substack publishers, it's unfathomable, unfathomable that someone with a swastika avatar who writes about the Jewish question, who promotes great replacement theory, could be given the tools to succeed on your platform, and yet you've been unable to adequately explain your position. It's not that he's they've been unable to, it's yeah. that they've decided that you're not worthy of responding to. All right. So in the past, right. you've defended your now, but now that over 200 people out of 17,000 have signed off on this, now they're going to, they may be compelled, especially given who their investors are, to do so. But to continue with the letter, and I again vehemently disagree <laughs> with the content of this letter, but I think it's important to get it out there so that we can discuss it and everybody knows where we're coming from and why people are freaking out like me. They say that in the past, Substack has defended their decision to, to platform bigotry by saying they make decisions based on principles, not PR, and will stick to their hands off approach to content moderation, which is also not really true, but that's okay. But there's a difference between a hands-off approach and putting your thumb on the scale. We know you moderate some content, including spam sites and newsletters written by sex workers. Why do you choose to promote and allow the monetization of sites that traffic in white nationalism? Promote and advance. Promote is one thing. Now, people are saying that they were getting newsletters suggesting and recommending within their scope of being of recommended newsletters, Nazi content. That that's bad. Um, if it falls into whatever category overlaps with someone, like what are you supposed to do? Like they have algorithms. Yeah. Um, but your unwillingness, as they say, to play by your own rules on this issue has already led to the announced departures of several prominent substackers, including people I've never heard of, Rusty Foster and Helena Fitzgerald. They follow previous Rusty exodus Trumbo. of writers, as Matt Matt described as journalist Casey Newson told his more than 166,000 subscribers after the piece came out, the oh. correct number of newsletters using Nazi symbols that you host and profit from on your platform is zero. Uh-huh. So they're saying we, your publishers, want to hear from open you, ones. Want to hear from you on as the long official, as they're closeted. Sub, they want to hear from you on the it's official fun. Substack newsletter. They're making a demand of what they want to hear and where. Is platforming Nazis part of your yeah. vision of success? Let us know. From there, we can each decide if this is still where we want to be. And then they're, of course, sending this out. They're copy-pasting <clears throat> this and sending this out to every single person that subscribes yeah. to their Substack, which means that potentially millions of people will see this and now think that Substack is a Nazi platform, which is what they were trying to do in the first place, these, these people. I don't first know place. why. Considering that right. they well, publish is- here. Exactly what we no talked sense. about last week. It makes no sense because right. they don't have an alternative I mean, exactly place to publish. Exactly what we talked about last week. Yes. With no. the CTI, this is exactly what yes. we talked about them doing. I'm so this glad. Is exactly you... like what they did to Rage Against the War first time. You know, yes. like oh, there was one one Nazi who showed up and snuck in. So therefore, they did it to March of Medicare uh, for know. All. Remember? Remember? Yep. They did mm-hmm. to, back in 2021. They somebody put some guy on the list, yep. and then all of a sudden it was a Nazi event, even though they kicked him off the second. And these guys haven't even kicked the same, guy off. Same reason why there's always there's always one one fucking federale who shows up with a fucking swastika at every fucking event that might actually change anything. Right? Yeah, Rage like, Against War. They had the guy with the big flag, right, waving it around. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. Before we get back so, to it, and I don't want to keep forgetting. Hey, check this out. If you do want to hook <clears> us up, we do have a Substack, IndieNewsNetwork.substack.com. You can subscribe there. Patreon.com slash IndieNewsNetwork. I'd love to see everyone support Substack because of what's going on here and show your support for that platform and for us over there. That would be awesome. Animaris, thank you. Animaris tipped 20, 20 bucks over on the Rockfin. Says we're all fucked, truly fucking fucked. And I agree with her and I love her. And thank you, Anna, for your support over there. Um, also, we've got, let me go back to that for a second. We've got Rumble. We are live on Rumble and nobody is chatting. If you are on Rumble and we are live, hey, say something, say hello. Let yeah. us know we're live. Quit being fake views. Quit being fake views. Put, a, put, a, put some in the chat. Rumble has made some major upgrades you know? to, to their platform lately. I'm talking, they added playlists. They changed the look and feel to look a lot more like YouTube. And you'll see squares and tiles instead of these long things with big descriptions. It's a lot tighter, a lot more condensed. I mean, they could be using triangles, bro. They could be, but it's Just it's think not. about they could be using triangles. They could be, but it's not. And then, of course, we've got the Cash App, dollar sign, Indie News Network. So, again, if there's, if you could possibly hook us up, that's great. Mm -hmm. If not, enjoy the content. Share the stream. Please do. Share it and like it. All right. So, I want to get back to 